Hello, everyone. Welcome to Crow Canyon's Fall Solutions Showcase. We will be presenting IT Solutions today. This is a part of a series of three webinars we're having. We're going to have IT Solutions Today webinar. We'll be covering work order solutions on October 30th at the same time, 11 a.m. Pacific, 2 p.m. Eastern. And then we'll be covering HR solutions next week on Thursday, November 1st, again at the same time, 11 a.m. Uh, Pacific and 2 p.m. Eastern. If you sign up for this one webinar, then you have signed, you have already registered and signed up for the other ones, and uh, you can attend all of them or any of them you want. We'll have recordings for them available to anybody who registered for for this webinar series. So we hope this uh, will prove very useful for you, and you'll get a lot out of it. So today we'll focus on IT solutions. We'll get to that in one minute, but I want to give you a little bit of housekeeping set of rules on, on the webinar, which is that we have a question box. You have a question box there in the webinar screen, and you can enter in any questions you want. We'll try and answer them during the webinar. If not, we'll uh, be able to send you replies after if needed, but we'll try to get to them during, during the webinar, and uh, once in a while we'll interject if there's a question and it could be answered. Uh, so what we'll do today, we'll cover IT help desk, asset management, solutions that really power up your IT department and your IT work work and your IT support. This presentation will be given by Ryan. I'm Scott Restivo, the CEO of Crow Canyon Software, and Ryan's one of our top sales executives, and he'll be giving the demo on this. So I think we're ready to g get going. Are you ready there, Ryan, to jump right into it? Yeah, I'm all ready. Thanks, Scott. Appreciate it. Okay, take it from there. Well, thanks. Hey, thanks everyone for joining. You know, I see some names in here that I've talked to uh, previously, so I always appreciate you guys coming back into the new people. It's nice to meet you. Uh, like Scott said, I'm Ryan. I'm going to cover the IT help desk today as well as asset tracking. Um, but first, let me give you a little background on Crow Canyon. Uh, so we've been around since uh, 1999. We started as a, a help desk on Outlook on client, and now I've been working on SharePoint since around 2001. Um, there's two sides to the Crow Canyon business. So the one side that we're going to be covering today is our out-of-the-box applications, the nine boxes you see on the screen now. So help desk, asset tracking, etc. The other side is the tools that we use to underlie our applications. It's called the Nitro Studio. There are about 18 different apps that make up uh, the backbone of all of our out-of-the-box applications. Um, now, the Nitro Studio, like I said, does power our applications. It is the backbone of what we do, but it, you can also take the Nitro Studio and to create your own business processes, your own applications in your SharePoint environment. You can run wild with it if you'd like to. Now, if you want to learn more about the Nitro Studio, I will touch on some points uh, of Nitro today during the demo. If you want to know more, feel free to reach out to us at sales at and I'd be happy to show you a more in-depth demo of the Nitro Studio. So with that being said, let's pop into the, uh, the IT help desk uh, uh, portion of the, the webinar here. So I always like to start in my demos, these webinars, with, with how tickets get into the system, with how we accept requests. Uh, but right now, what we're looking at is the landing page for your IT team, your departmental team. So let me preface this and say that what we do, yes, we have our own tools in the Nitro Studio, but we also work hand-in-hand -hand with SharePoint on-premise or Office 365, meaning that if you want to include your own branding, you know, update the logo, color scheme, you have the full capability to do so. Uh, but let's, like I said, let's start with how tickets get into the system. So from the technician standpoint, you have the ability to click this button up here in the upper left-hand corner, says new ticket. You can, uh, someone calls in or walks into an IT, t IT team member's office, they can submit a ticket through this feature here. We also have the ability to um, create requests, create tickets through email. So if you use a shared inbox, if you use multiple shared inboxes, support at, help desk at, we have the ability to collect those emails and turn them into tickets. The third feature is this employee portal, uh, power portal. Uh, I like to call it a departmental intranet. It's one of the pieces of the Nitro Studio. So if we look at the Nitro Studio here, the power portal is one of the features exclusive to Crow Canyon. And like I said, it's it's the it's the departmental internet page, intranet page. It's a way for your end users to interact with your IT team, with the staff. 
So they can see notifications, you can have quick tickets or quick links. Uh, and again, the branding, the logo, it's all customizable to your internal requirements. But really the functionality lives on these four, uh, four tabs across the top with the main one being the submit new ticket feature. So what's nice here is that we are, um, we're using their existing SharePoint login, whether it's on-premise or Office 365 to pull their information into this ticket form. Ticket details, ticket description. Now, don't pay too much attention into the uh, too much attention to the information we're capturing here because this is SharePoint, and we are flexible in terms of what columns we can add and subtract to these forms. But it gives you an idea of what you can present to your end users. So they pull this form up, fill out their ticket details, fill out their description, which is rich text, include attachments that they'd like, and hit save. Now, what's nice about the portal is that. It is mobile responsive, so this will scale down to a phone if need be, iPhone, iPad, Android, and it's browser-based, so it is mobile responsive. But we also have some workflows built in behind um, uh, this portal as well. So let's just say we're ready to submit a ticket, test ticket. Select a category and a dropdown. Breeze through this real quick. Now, once I hit save, a few things are gonna happen. First is the end user is gonna be notified that the ticket has been submitted successfully, both on this page and via email. Item created successfully, and I'm gonna get an email saying my ticket has been created uh, successfully as well. Second, as you can already see, is we get routed to this View My Tickets tab. And title's pretty self-explanatory here. It's the ability to view all of your tickets submitted. You can uh, filter through the views, whether they're open or closed but it gives you an idea of who the assigned staff is, what the request status is, and you can come back and add notes to the ticket that the end user can if they forgot. It's a nice way, again, to provide communication from your end users to your internal staff. Third part of the workflow is that uh, the, ticket is, the ticket is assigned to the appropriate internal party. I say in, uh, appropriate internal party because we have a lot of options for ticket assignment. Um, basically, whatever your internal requirements, requirements are, we can make happen. So if you do it based on category or issue type, uh, if certain team members are responsible for a certain category, we can automatically assign them to the ticket. Uh, they're responsible for certain issue types, round robin, uh, if an entire team wants to be assigned to a ticket, uh, multiple people assigned to a ticket, a lot of options for ticket assignment. Now. <laughs> I'm gonna sound a bit like a broken record as I work through this webinar about uh, customization configuration, what we can do from a flexibility standpoint. And this is one of the areas where I'm gonna to touch on the Nitro Studio. So real quick, we're gonna take a peek under the cover, uh, under the covers of the portal page. So uh, if I have the appropriate access, you can see I'm logged in my admin account. I can come up to this portal settings and go to the back end of the site. And like I, Oh, sorry about that. Like I said, you can change the background logo, you can change the image from a, a branding perspective, and then you can come in and really change anything uh, related to not only this, this portal site, but the backend site, which we're about to get into. But one of, the, one of the features that people tend to grasp onto, and it's my favorite piece of the Nitro Studio, is our forms designer. So we looked at the form briefly uh, when we talked about the portal. Uh, when I first logged in, we talked about that submit new ticket feature. So this is the form I'm going to be working on for this, uh, for our backend designer. So now this is the Crow Canyon forms designer. It's built by Crow Canyon, designed, maintained by Crow Canyon. And like I said, I love it. So you can keep things very high level from uh, designing and creating a form as simple as changing colors of the tabs, doing uh, tabs versus sections where the ticket gets routed. So like we looked at the view my submitted tickets tab after we submitted the ticket, you can change where that gets pointed to. Um, you have uh, access to standard SharePoint features like list settings or column creation from the form designer as well. And then you could even take it a step further and say we wanna come in and make changes to what's presented uh, to the end user on this form. So let's say we wanna capture location. Under form controls, I have all of the tabs accessible in the list. So kind of standard SharePoint in that regard. But what I can do is I can search. So, all right, so I wanna know the employee location. I find the column, I hold it, drag, and drop it. 
very straightforward, very simple when it comes to making changes to these forms out of the box. Hey, Ryan, this is James Recevo. Uh, just wanted to pipe in real quick and see, ask you, can we security trim these uh, tabs and or columns? Yeah, it's a great question. Uh, read my mind, actually. So James is spot on. So you can do things as simple as just add columns to the form, or you can take them to the next step, take it to the next level in terms of making sure that the columns require information, add unique permissions to the column, as well as provide column, val column validations. So not only can you add columns to the form, but you can just close out of that. You can also apply unique permissions to the columns. And what's nice here is that you could actually even take it a step further and inject your own custom JavaScript, your own custom CSS into the form, as well as apply a signature, capture a wet signature on a form, which I'll get into more in depth on the back end. But that's how we get tickets into the system. I know I took a little sidestep to show you the forms, but it is, like I said, my favorite piece of the Nitro Studio. And if you do want to know more about the forms, please feel free to reach out to us after the webinar, and I'll be happy to show you a more in-depth demo. So any questions about how tickets get into the system, feel free to shoot them over to James. But just to recap, we have this Power Portal via email and then this Submit New Ticket feature here on the back end. All right, so now let's talk about, about working the tickets. So once the ticket hits the system, there's a few different ways to view the ticket. So we have, you know, uh, those familiar with SharePoint, when a list item is created, it updates the master list. So in this case, tickets. But through my chats with, uh, you know, our different clients, uh, we've kind of learned that sometimes an IT help desk can be used by multiple teams or multiple departments. So what we've included in our out-of-the-box features are these different dashboards, ways to view the tickets uh, that are specific to, like I said, a team or a department. So if I click on this tickets tab, it's looking at me as a staff member. So I can see my staff tickets, uh, or my tickets, I'm sorry, my tasks for the day, and then uh, a bit of what we can do with our reporting, open tickets by category and priority, close tickets by month, as long as, the information's within the site, we can report on it. But the same goes for all members that log into the IT site. We can do managers dashboards, we can do individual department dashboards, team dashboards, a lot of flexibility when it comes to permissions and uh, groups. But let's take a look at an actual ticket here. Let's pull one up. So again, you know, kind of the standard SharePoint features, we look at an edit form and a display form for SharePoint list items. So right now we're looking at the display form and we've added some uh, custom actions, some additional features to our display version of these tickets. So you can see them across the top here. We have self-assign, close, assign to someone, create problem, create change request. Basically a way to kick off a simple workflow without having to, well, with just having to click a button. So let's say I want to assign this ticket to me. I click this self-assign button and it's gonna let me know what's going on. This ticket's now been assigned to me. Give it a quick refresh. And I tab over to staff and now the ticket's assigned to my admin account. So a real easy way to fire off those workflows. But the, the cool one, and go ahead James, I'm sorry. Oh, no, it's okay. I, I didn't want to interrupt your flow there, but uh, is it possible to add other custom actions to that ribbon? Absolutely. And I would refer back to um, the Nitro Forms demo. If you're interested in that, the custom actions is a part of our Nitro Forms, and that's something that we can cover in more depth during a more specific Nitro Forms demo. So if you're interested, you want to know about more about the custom actions or the forms, please let us know. Be happy to do so. Great question. Uh, my favorite feature or the one that uh, our clients typically gravitate to on this, this uh, display form is our croaking and email feature. And what it does is it gives you the ability to update and communicate with your end users through a specific ticket. So you can see it's this is emails coming from my admin account. It's going to my requester and then any assigned staff you want to have included on the ticket. You can include attachments, KB articles if you'd like and then apply unique mail templates to this email as well. So if you have kind of a canned response to password reset, or if you have a you know kind of a default template that goes out to all ticket requesters, 
you can apply those mail templates to this ticket. Now, what's cool about this is that when you hit send, this email is gonna come from your email account and it's gonna send an email to the requester. But what it's also gonna do is going to update the email history associated with this ticket. So now if I tap over to email history, I can see all outgoing and incoming emails related to this ticket. So kind of gone are the days of sifting through your Outlook, like did I send the ticket, did they respond, do I have to update it? It's gonna be stored right here within the email history of this ticket. Again, any questions on the custom action to the display form, feel free to shoot those over in the question box and we'll handle them as uh, we move forward. But right now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna shift to the, the edit form, right, where we actually make changes to the ticket. So from the edit side, we try to keep, you know, our ticket, uh, our, our, our working the ticket uh, as straightforward as possible. We try to keep ITIL in mind when we when we look at uh, these different tabs and these different columns. Again, these are highly configurable, flexible forms. So we looked at the forms designer from the end user's perspective, and now this the same principles, the same forms designer is also applied to the internal side. So these columns. Uh, are all configurable, removable. You can add and subtract as many as you'd like. So we have title, category, issue type, description, but the big one I wanna point out here is this uh, 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 additional information box here at the bottom. This is where you can actually capture a wet signature. So if you require a physical signature, we have the option here um, on our forms. Rem apologize, I'm on my laptop, so it looks like a bit like a toddler, but you guys get the idea. You can sign these forms if you'd like. As I tap through over to staff, we've, you know, we kind of realized that the way the world's going is that uh, everything's done by phones nowadays. So being able to sign a form on your phone is the way of the future, and we, we feel like this is a big piece for those management level, the uh, director level, C-level people who need to sign things on the fly. Uh, staff tab, like I said, you can assign team members, you can assign staff members, it can be based on category or issue type, it can be around Robin, it can be by department, a lot of options for ticket assignment. You can also build in some unique SLAs for like response due or due date. So if you need to have a certain a ticket responded to uh, in a certain amount of time, whether it's coming from your C level or your director levels and has to be responded to in the first hour, you can auto-populate those responses and those due dates based on those your internal SLAs. So let's say a ticket needs to be closed within the first two days of open, auto-populates that time and date. And now what's nice here is that not only is there a workflow built in around the ticket submission, there's also a workflow built in around notifications. So you can ping people as aggressively as you'd like, meaning you can send out as many notifications when this due date is coming due. So whether it's a day before, day of, hour before, uh, you have options there when it comes to notifications. Resolution, the resolution notes, pretty straightforward, right? When you're ready to fill out a ticket uh, or ready to close a ticket and send it off to the end user, you fill out your resolution notes and that will, the end user will be notified of the resolution. But what's cool about this is that you can, uh, uh, this is rich text, so you can copy and paste, you know, move notes in. But if you've identified this ticket as a, uh, one that you're gonna see reoccurring, or it's gonna pop up multiple times. You can actually create a knowledge-based article from those resolution notes. It turns it into a SharePoint Wiki page and update your KB article library. So not only can you create a knowledge-based article, but you can add KB articles to a ticket as well. So you can see here's our here's our library. You can do a, select them via dropdown, or you can also type and search as well. Related items. Kind of a snapshot overview of the ticket. You can assign associated tasks. Um, so if you need someone like, in this case, I'd like Scott to check the printer connection before I close this ticket out, uh, I can assign it to Scott, assign him a due date, uh, and he can come in and correct the, or update the task uh, and let me know that it's been completed. You can also relate assets, problems, and change requests as well. So problems are linking you know, child tickets to parent tickets, and then the ability to create a change request. Uh, from a ticket as well. Now, what I like about Crow Canyon applications is that, like I said, we've been doing this since 2001, is that all of our all of our lists, all the functionality in these applications are tied together. 
So you can see our tickets list is tied to our problems list, is tied to, tied to our change request list. And that's apparent across all of our apps. So you can easily transition from one list to another from a list item. Easy, cuts down on click, click saves a lot of time. Uh, last tab here I'm gonna cover is this work log, pretty self-explanatory. Uh, internal notes, if you want to, or anytime someone adds uh, notes to a field, it's gonna date and timestamp. Uh, who said it, what they said, when they said it, et cetera. So now this is working a ticket. Uh, again, if you wanna go, if you want more information or you wanna see more in depth uh, uh, of a demo on it, feel free to reach out to us. Or if you have questions now, feel free to shoot them over. Uh, but what I'm gonna do is I'm actually going to focus more on this related items tab and show how we can link different applications together. So right now you can see that we've added an asset to a ticket and what I'm going to do is I'm going to flip over to our assets application and show you what it looks like from the asset side. So if you have any question, questions on the tickets, feel free to shoot those over. And I'm going to switch over to the asset application now. So you can see that we try and keep the look and feel similar as we shift across multiple applications. So tiles and dials, uh, just like the tickets page, um, the list view web part. So here's our tickets, tiles, and dials. Here's our assets, tiles, and dials. This is another piece of the Nitro Studio, another thing that you can do within our application creation suite, tiles and dials. So we try and keep the look and feel similar. I like it because it becomes almost a natural extension of your Office 365 or SharePoint on-premise environment. Uh, for the IT team, it's less, you know, less to manage from an application perspective. Everything's uh, already done through your SharePoint environment, and it just becomes, like I said, a natural extension of that SharePoint world. Uh, so with our assets application, again, we try to apply that same principle that I was talking about in the tickets world of tying all of our lists together. So assets, uh, you can see we have assets, contracts, uh, software assets, and vendors. The mindset is the same. We wanna be able to seamlessly jump from list to list while we're in the application. And since we've tied these two applications together, so they are, let me, let me back up a step. These are two separate applications, right? We have our IT help desk and we have our asset management application. So they can be standalone, you can have them separate, but you can also tie them together, which just gives you the option to manage everything from one site or site collection. Really nice feature, really nice piece. But let's jump into an asset and I'll show you what it looks like to uh, uh, manage an asset in our system. So while this loads, a lot of, when I do these demos, a lot of people ask me about how I get assets into the system, how I update these lists. A lot of options there. I'm sure that question will pop up. I'd be more than happy to cover that in more depth. Uh, in a personalized demo, but we do have an Excel import tool. We can con uh, generate connections with like an SCCM or a land sweeper. So we have options to uh, update your data into this assets list. I hate duplicate information or duplicate entry. I try to avoid it at all costs. And we want you guys to be able to uh, not have to do that as well. So looking at an asset, I'm just gonna pull up the edit, the edit form here. Uh, we do have some uh, custom actions in the asset form as well, but I'm gonna cover those in a little bit more detail as we work through the asset forms. Asset info, pretty self-explanatory. It's an overview asset type. It's leading, uh, reading from our site schema in the back end. So like this is a Dell laptop and reading off this Dell laptop, we're updating the information here below it. Title, category, status, description, make model, serial number, et cetera. Again, cutting down on that duplicate entry, if you have all, if you plug the asset type into the backend list, this information will pop up automatically based on that asset type. Barcode number and scanner or barcode uh, scanning, we don't offer hardware, but if you're using barcode scanners and you want it to be applied to the asset application, it's something that we could look into an integration for you. Again, if you have a question about that, feel free to shoot it over to us. I'd be happy to cover it in more detail uh, post demo. So right here is our first uh, our first example of how we're connecting our list together. So we have a contract service date for this asset. It looks like next year. So in our contract management piece, in our contracts, 
this, li this list here on the left. We have a responsible person for this contract. I'm assuming it's a Dell contract. So when this uh, co uh, date's coming due, right, the date column, just like the tickets list, we can notify those people of uh, when this contract's coming due, like the due dates and the ticket. So we identify the responsible person, and we're going to ping them as aggressively as you guys want on when this contract's coming due. Hey, this Dell's due in a year. Hey, this Dell's due in or the services due in, sorry, not service. Contracts due in 90 days, 60 days, 30 days, 15, 10, 5. Whatever you guys want, internally we can make it happen. But again, it gives you the ability to tie those lists together. Location and owner, who has it, where they have it. You can get pretty granular there. Uh, history and finance, the second option of how we can tie these lists together. So uh, here's our vendor, it's Dell. Invoice number, purchase price, uh, depreciable life, etc. Um, everything related to the history and finance of this particular asset. Related items. So again, pops up here. I think related items tab is my favorite in the Crow Canyon applications. It gives you a snapshot overview of what's going on with this particular asset. So not only uh, can we relate tickets to an asset like we saw in the tickets application, but we can also relate problems, change requests, warranties, manuals, contracts to an asset as well. So at any time, you can jump to one of those six lists and view exactly what's going on with this particular asset. Dig into this change request more. Maintenance. Uh, so preventative maintenance on an asset. Uh, pops up a lot. Uh, this question is, uh, I, I probably feel that 95% of the time when I do an assets demo. Uh, but to give you an overview, um, you set up a maintenance schedule based on your asset type. So right now, we're reading off of this asset type here, this Dell. Bostro 260. So I think it's based on a, ooh, I'd update that. Let's say yearly maintenance schedule for this laptop. Let's put it out for 2019. So what it does here is we're reading the maintenance schedule for this particular asset, and we're going to ping the asset owner, the person responsible for the maintenance on this asset that a maintenance coming due. Much like contracts, much like tickets, you can ping them as aggressively as you'd like. You can apply a maintenance cost and it keeps a running table under the history and finance of the asset of how much you've spent on uh, uh, on how much you've spent on this particular asset. Now, this question pops up a lot uh, during the demos again, and I'd be happy to cover it in more detail on a more personalized demo, but we can set up multiple preventative maintenance uh, uh, schedules. So not just one, you can do duplicates or not duplicates. You can do two, three maintenance schedules per asset. Like I said, I'd be happy to cover that on an individual basis. Last tab, sometimes it applies to about 50% uh, of the people, uh, but it just gives you this asset loaners. It gives you the option to have a, if like, if you have a, a loaner bank of assets, uh, rental assets, you can uh, keep track of those asset loaners in your assets list. Who has it, the checkout date, the expected check-in date, the actual check-in date, and then the history associated with this loaner. Who had it, how long they had it for, uh, et cetera. Now, what's cool here is that we have the Nitro Studio, like we talked about, right? Asset loaners uh, is a tab living within our asset application. So what we can do is we can actually, if you'd like, wanna go down that route, create a form to embed it within your employee power portal for them to request a loaner. So again, we're tying everything together, creating a ticket for uh, an asset loaner, being able to check that asset out to the person and track them both, not only within the related items of the assets, so you'll see the ticket here, the request, but you can also see the history. Any questions pop up on the assets, feel free to shoot them over into the question box. But again, this is just kind of a quick overview of what we can do from tracking and maintaining an asset. Uh, real quick, I just kind of want to hammer the point home of how we tie lists together. So I'm going to pull up uh, our vendors list real quick. So we've been working off the Dell vendor. I'll keep it uh, I'll keep it in line here. So let's pull up Dell. So from our Dell vendor, we can see, you know, the information around our contact there, phone number, et cetera. But we also have a related items tab built into the vendors list. So we can see all related contracts associated with the vendor, all related assets associated with the vendor. And if I pull up, let's say this Dell master lease agreement, 
bouncing from list to list from just clicks of a button. I can see the responsible person. So who's going to be notified when this contract's coming due, the information around the contract, and then as well as the related assets to this contract as well. Again, tying all the lists together, being able to bounce around, save time from asset to vendor to contract. And if you do want to take a deeper dive into the vendors list, the contracts list, if you want to know more about problems and change requests, I do urge you to reach out, let us know. I'd be happy to schedule an individual demo for anybody. Uh, but with that being said, I'm going to turn it back over to Scott now to kind of talk about what's new, what's upcoming in the Crow Canyon world. And then uh, again, thanks for joining. Thanks for coming. And Scott, feel free to hop in here. Oh, okay. Thanks, Ryan. Uh, one thing oh, someone's asking about is uh, the mobile. <clears throat> Maybe if you go to a portal, you can shrink, you know, show how it looks in the um, in the in a mobile device. How you know, tablet and uh, and uh, smartphone. Because, like you said, most things. I mean, there's a big movement towards mobile and being mobile friendly. So, if you right. shrink this down, you can see that it. It gets the hamburger menu and it gets the screen, you know, it changes. Of course, what you do with the portal here is you uh, mo you modify with the background to so it fits better on the screen. You can change the background image or the ticket. Like Ryan was showing you, the forms designer is very, very powerful. The forms designer in Nitro, the workflow designer, the custom actions, all those work together to make the application really uh, function well. But what we're doing with Nitro Studio is, is as uh, Ryan pointed out, this is what underlies the applications. And this Nitro Studio is part of our applications, but also can be uh, used or purchased separately as a subscription so you can build your own applications. And we're starting to do some really interesting stuff with this, even the forms, workflows, the reporting, the portal, the custom mm -hmm. actions, email manager. We just added a, a list search component. But what we're going now, and it's, this is really an exciting movement for us, is into AI services. We're adding bots. We're adding uh, natural language processing into, into the system. So these will make the IT support or whatever kind of application you're doing much more functional, much more useful for the end users. It's quite exciting. Right now, even in the portal right now, you can add live chat simply uh, by... Uh, some configuration in the portal settings, you put in some JavaScript that activates the chat, and lo and behold, you have a chat going. Yeah, it's under general settings, and you pop in some la live chat integration. That could be like Olark, or we recently did one for somebody who had written their own kind of uh, internal chat thing mm -hmm. going there. And so that's live chat. A chat bot is a little bit different, and that's going to use automated, using, un using the... Um, artificial intelligence and big data and all that it's going to go through a kind of predefined almost like wizard type approach with the end user that's saying uh what's your question and then here's a possible answer and here's others you know you know a chatbot like a kind of back and forth going on there that's mm -hmm. really interesting and as we build out the knowledge base people build out their knowledge bases or their data set the, the chatbot gets better and better but the whole idea here is to make the experience for the end users as streamlined and uh, functional and efficient as possible so that the people who come in get their questions answered quickly uh, and and can get back to work there's a there's a question with uh, taking up the time to create a you know create the form and submit it and wait for an answer that's going to be a little bit old school you know the the uh, new the new model is to have a uh, put in a question or an answer through natural language and then have a response come back because the knowledge already exists within the system in the knowledge base or the tickets list for a lot of the common questions. So that's kind mm -hmm. of the direction we're going and uh, seeing, building that in using the Microsoft bot framework and Lewis and all their other AI as a service, they call it. That's the AA, AI, AAS. You've heard of as a service for everything else. Well, now there's a, uh, artificial intelligence as a service and making those capabilities available to developers like Crow Canyon and we're, we're actively in, in uh, building that in. And we, not only that, we can also provide AI services outside of uh, this our applications if someone wants to implement a chatbot or, um, or yeah. uh, natural language processing. The other thing now, Ryan, you want to pipe in? I was going to go into modern yeah, UI yeah. and how we're functioning. I was just, yeah. just going to uh, pipe in real quick. Now, I've seen the chatbot. It's, it's cool. Like uh, I've, I've said this to Scott recently. 
if you would have told me six months ago that a chat uh, AI or chatbot was accessible in Nitro or in uh, SharePoint, I probably would have laughed at you. But I've seen it. I've seen it work. I've seen it live. It's really cool. Now, Scott, we're pretty close to being able to demo this the chat live, right? So if they wanted to reach out after the webinar and see a demo of the chatbot, that's something that we could set up for them. Is that correct? You speak yeah, and we're going to have a webinar in November on specifically on the uh, Crow Canyon AI services, which means bots and natural language processing and all that. So we're just getting that all ready to do a demo, uh, you know, particularly of that subject itself. It's pretty, it's really exciting and a lot of potential there going mm -hmm. forward. And so, that kind of yeah. ties into the modern UI, right? I, I'm sorry, I cut you off there, but I no, think not it's at all. hand in hand, yeah? Yeah, the modern UI, well, if you're on uh, SharePoint Online, you know, Office 365, it's available, the modern UI. And, you know, there are people who say there's it's still not ready for, there's some things that are still not perfect in it, but it's definitely very strongly the direction Microsoft's moving in. If anybody was at Ignite, you mm -hmm. heard modern UI, modern UI, modern UI. So I, you heard that over and over again in regards to SharePoint. And the reason for it is that it's evolving SharePoint out of this kind of old style programming, use ASPX and all that, into a more modern framework. And we have adapted all our applications to work in the modern UI. And it's quite interesting to take the modern UI, add the web parts that are, exist already from Microsoft, as well as our web parts that we've developed in the SPFX uh, development environment, list view, reports, uh, these bots we're talking about, all these things we developed that can enhance the modern UI. Uh, so it becomes a really, really much more useful and also very mobile responsive uh, mm -hmm. design, design framework. That's what modern UI is, a lot of what modern UI is about is being mobile, mobile first, cloud first kind of approach to things, right, Ryan? Exactly, and even taking it a step further and really utilizing the SharePoint app. Um, so we talked about it briefly, but you know, working hand in hand with Microsoft when they make these new updates, we want to leverage them, right? We want to ride the back of Microsoft and make our tools make sense for that world. And you know, we're already doing stuff with the AI and bot, like Scott said, and we're just a step away from being able to utilize that SharePoint app as well. So not only will it be mobile responsive, but I have a feeling that very shortly we're looking at being able to use our, our the Crow Canyon tools in the SharePoint app as well. That's right. We're moving forward quickly. Mm -hmm. I mean, this is technology is accelerating, and we're right on the edge of it. Our dev, dev team is very energized to get this going and uh, build up a support or any kind of problem. That's why we have a three-part webinar. There's not just IT support. There's also work order solutions, HR solutions. We can do any kind of request management. We get all kinds of interesting, interesting uh, qu uh, quests for types of monitoring, you know, tracking request management tools that are somewhat related to IT support or request management, but stuff like, say you want to create a whole bunch of teams, you know, Microsoft Teams. Well, you might have to govern, you imply some governance, and the governance would be who, who requested the team site, the group site, how long should it exist, why was it created, when was it created, and also, as Ryan showed you, notifications could go out and say, well, the expiration of this team site is, you know, December 31st or something. So everybody gets noticed and keeps track of, of that. Other interesting ones, office supplies, marketing materials, mm -hmm. uh, all kinds of request tracking, not to mention customer support, you know, complaints, issues, problems from customers, all that. The portal can be adapted to be available to the outside uh, people, you know, customers, right. clients, members, whatever, and provide that kind of support, right? Exactly. Yeah, that's, that hits the nail on the head. I mean, yeah, we do have these out-of-the-box applications ready to go, the IT help desk, asset tracking, com, like I showed you today. But you know, I'd say we get a lot of requests uh, from our existing clients, from new customers as well, to go out and build out specific applications uh, for them, not only in SharePoint on-premise, but SharePoint online. Circles a lot around replacing paper forms. So if you have a well, paper... Not yeah. Go ahead. Yeah. So well, on paper, but it's going to jump in with InfoPath forms and yeah, Lotus yeah. Notes. So we're replacing yeah. those, you know, daily, really. I mean, with the mm -hmm. Nitro Forms designer. Exactly. So uh, yes, we do. Like, yeah, I touched on it briefly at the beginning. We do have these out of the box applications, but if you do want to take a look at what we can do to replace InfoPath, Lotus Notes, or even those paper forms, please let us know. Yeah, we're going to be uh, doing some more demos on Nitro and the AI and the bots and everything uh, coming up in. In November and December, you focus back on that. We do have Nitro.studio. I mean, we have Crocandy.com, but people can go to Nitro.studio, which is our uh, place where we're describing more of the Nitro uh, mm -hmm. services, the Nitro capabilities. And 
yeah, it's good stuff. So what we encourage people to do is to talk to us one-on-one -on -one or, you know, do a, uh, send us questions, sales at croquet.com. Ryan will, will be there answering them or me or any of us, any of the staff. And, uh, We'll talk with you about what your needs are and what you want to do. It's uh, quite exciting. Yeah, there's a Nitro Studio up there. You get a free 30-day trial. You use it either in one site or multiple sites or out your whole tenancy. It works online and offline. Now, there is one question I want to address that came up, kind of jumping track a little here. It says there's a lot of customization can be done. How much is out of the box? And that's a good question. So we build these applications that Ryan was talking about, the help desk and other ready pretty much ready to go with a little bit of tweaking you might have different categories you set up your notifications who gets notified maybe some canned messages and emails tweak the, just little things and we can help you with that and we include professional services with the purchases and we do find why ryan three to six hours and everybody's pretty much up and running unless it's complex more complex tweaking would you say sure. yeah. yeah yeah sometimes it runs into more than that mm -hmm. so it really depends if you're if you're um happy with you know what's going on pretty much out of the box we get you going really quickly but like we also said in this conversation that we just had in the last few minutes is that you can also adapt it for many many other purposes that are specific to your industry or even specific to your company or organization as needed and given the power of nitro studio which is this layer on top of office 365 layer on top of sharepoint this can be we made it so easy to make the modifications you go in and change a form it's very easy add a new tab add a new field no problem come in and tweak a workflow add a custom action it's very very uh simple to do because you don't have to go down to you know what they call low code citizen development you don't have to go down to the base level nitro studio or i mean i was saying sorry you don't have to go down to visual studio the the yeah. hard code c plus plus programming blah 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 hey we worry about all that for you we 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 encapsulate it encapsulate it inside of the Nitro Studio, and you want to change a form, just drag and drop the form over, I mean the field over, or create up the dynamic forms, or add a little, you know, very 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 simple. We've made it easy and simple to make the customization and change it. And you know another point, and I'm just going to say this right out, not be shy about it. People look at us as a as a, an alternative to Nintex too. Nintex is very high priced, you know, and people mm -hmm. don't always get the functionality out of it that they want or need. And so in Nitro Studio, they can come in, do many of the same functionality that um, is in Nintex, or, you know, and, and uh, get the benefits for much lower cost to do it. So, you know, just throw that in there, huh, Ryan? What do you think? Yeah, I agree. I agree. <laughs> okay. And I think a lot of, I think there's even things that differentiate us from, uh, from Nintex, being able to have unlimited users and limited workflows. It, it, I, 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 I'm not only an advocate of Nitro Studio because I work here, but I, it's also uh, it, it's a great tool. I'm not a SharePoint developer by any means, but I feel very comfortable coming in and making changes to forms, workflows, power portals, reports. Uh, it's an easy tool in that not only can it be managed from the SharePoint admin level, but also from the departmental level. So if you're a department manager or you're yeah head of a department, don't be uh, uh, don't be uh, intimidated or scared of Nitro Studio because it's a SharePoint based tool. It really is easy to use and, and easy to admin. Sure, low code, no code, mm -hmm. no yep. code. If you want to do a little code, like throw in some JavaScript or custom CSS, that's possible. So a right. lot of times we use that for integration with databases, like membership databases or or exactly. ERPs or financial or CRMs, you know, whatever. Any kind of database that's out there, we can integrate, especially with the assets. You mentioned that with the assets, how they can coordinate with the uh, network discovery tools that are out there too. Exactly. Yeah. Yep. SCCM, Landsweeper, those are pretty common pop up pretty frequently. So yeah, yeah we can integrate with uh, with those as well. Okay. Then someone's asking if there are any features that are not available on premise versus the uh, online. I would say primarily at this point with 2016, the modern UI would be the only thing, but everything else with Nitro Studio is pretty much uh, there, right? As far as you know, Ryan, right? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, there is a different way to access the Nitro Studio and on-premise. Uh, we're putting together a document for it. So those people who are on-prem who are interested in that document on how to get into the Nitro Studio, again, I suggest reaching out to us. I'd be happy to uh, talk it over with you and send you that document. Sure. And if anybody's on 2010 and it's moving up, we can help, you know, with that uh, movement of applications, what we call legacy applications or older applications uh, into 2016. Or if you go into Office 365, we can help with that too. 
We do that quite often, you know, taking people off of like uh, Ryan was saying, paper forms, InfoPath forms, Lotus Notes, uh, mm -hmm. Access Database that was built by somebody, a spreadsheet, email. Mm -hmm. Hey, it's time to get, you know, things more efficient. There's real benefits to doing this. That's the thing. You're more efficient, you know, uh, you quicker. You said something there that I forgot to mention, and I think it's a really important point. Is you, if you've worked with a consultant in the past where they've built an application on 2010 or 2013, they built it specifically for you, and you guys may not know necessarily how it was built or how, why you designed it the way that you did. And now you have this big, ugly application stuck in an on premise environment that you can't move or can't replicate. What's nice about Crow Canyon and, and the Nitro Studio is that it's, we've been around for 20 years. We're not going anywhere anytime soon. And we have support uh, questions you can run past us, migration options. You know, So you, not only do you have the uh, full access to our tools, but also our developers and a clear path forward for migration if need be. Okay, yeah. Well, well Nitro Studio has been around 20 years, of course. But, but you know. Crow Canyon has, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but anyway, the um, somebody asked about 2010. Uh, we have moved beyond that. I hate to say, but you know, we will help you move from 2010. It's just, it's just so much more development possibilities in 2013, 2016, now 2019, as well as Office 365. If somebody really needed a 2010 application, we could. But it seems, I mean, it's 2018, almost 2019 now. So you know. I know people are still on it. Uh, we have customers who are still on it from when we built 2010 applications way back when. So, yeah, we can talk about it. But uh, yeah. this Nitro Studio do is not meant for 2010, just to be honest with you. It works for 2013, 2016, 2019, and uh, Office 365. And people, several people have asked about digital signature. So, you know, I think that's a... You know, we're going to put it up on the big board here and make mm -hmm. sure that, you know, uh, that's how we work. We get our yeah. feedback from our customer, right, Ryan? We hear every day somebody needs a new feature, new customization, new this, that. And we see how we build in. We add the signature pad. Now, the next thing is making compatible with digital signatures, a la DocuSign. Right. We, that we, we are, you know, it's an interactive thing with our customers to come up with the solutions they need. Absolutely. And, oh, the other point, Ryan, we should mention it. Shows we go to shows all the time. We're going yeah. to Redmond this Saturday. There's Chicago in the SP Fest. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, I mean, we're at all these different SharePoint shows all over the country. We're right. gonna this, this month alone has been Denver, Boston, Redmond, mm -hmm. Twin Cities next month, Chicago in uh, in December. So I mean, we're very active in the community, very right. involved, very uh, connected in that sense. And we like doing this. Right? Yeah, and w w exactly. But one piece I forgot to mention, I apologize, it's my fault, uh, the support. You mentioned that um, we update the products pretty frequently, and those are included with the subscription costs. So any updates that we make to the Nitro Studio are available via update or download. They're done through this page here. A, a box pops up underneath our subscription status that says update, and you're going to have access to all the updates we put out on uh, Nitro Studio. So when we do make a move towards the dig digital signature, it will be available to all of our customers. Well, absolutely. Like we just added list search, for, you know, uh, uh, list search tool that we just added. And that, you know, every, it's available to everybody simply by a simple download when you update the site. Bada bing, mm -hmm. there it is in your Nitro Studio and you can go and access it. The other point to make here, and before we finish, we should probably end up pretty soon. Uh, we, we love talking about this, so, you know. This is our fun. Anyway, so the thing is, I also want to mention that we don't preclude the use of other Microsoft technologies such as Flow. I mean, people have yeah. integrated our stuff with Microsoft Flow, for example. You know, Power BI. Yeah. I mean, we're not like us or them. It's it's right, right, Ryan. This is very exactly. much exactly. Yeah, mm -hmm. we want to work hand in hand with Microsoft. I mean, whatever tools that they put out. Um, you know, I, 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 I want to make sure that we are compatible with them and we're able to work hand in hand with what they're doing. That's right. And about training, when the person asks about training, yeah, we train, do training one on one or you, you know, one, one to many like us to a group of people and help you train through online. It's not just here's your videos. Good luck. Here's your manual. Good luck. We will work with you uh, live just like, a, you know, this kind of this kind of meeting we're doing now kind of thing where. We'll say, okay, here's and do screen shares and walk you through and answer the questions. That's why those one-on-one -on -one demos are great, but we also do training in that same manner where it's a one-on-one -on -one presentation, mm -hmm. engaging. And like I say, this is what we enjoy doing because we, 
the feedback, the comments, the needs for that are out there. That's how we understand uh, what where to go with our developments for sure. Uh, roll updates. I think James answered that. Uh, yeah, we roll out pretty often. I mean, we are continuously developing uh, Nitro Studio and the applications. So there are there's no set schedule like every Monday or anything, but it's pretty regular. Uh, updates going on and of course bug fixes are fixed as immediately as possible though there aren't any of those are there ever ryan bugs I don't know. very rarely yeah never heard of that <laughs> uh yes we do have um we do offer training classes uh we do have like like you mentioned we have some training videos online under our nitro site um but we do have the ability to have like scott said one-on-one -on -one sessions like we're doing today walk you through a process yeah. that as well well scott i think that's all i had um yeah i think we're good yeah thanks everyone for joining appreciate it um we're at, you know looking forward to seeing you guys at the next webinar yeah there's one on october 30th uh, next tuesday next thursday we'll also be doing ones in nitro studio and the ai in november we have one coming up with an mvp for flow up in december uh, so you know we're pretty pretty active with the webinars we also have the shows and I would encourage, say this over and over, just, you know, contact us for any questions or for one-on-one -on -one demos. We're glad to show you this over and over again, is whatever it takes. So we mm -hmm. hope to hear from you. Thanks, Ryan. Thank you very much. Thank you, James, for jumping in and helping with the questions. No, and no uh, we'll have a recording available, and uh, we'll see some of you next Tuesday or Thursday. But for now, um, I hope everyone has a good day and got something out of this webinar. Thank you, thank you everyone. Thanks, guys. Okay, bye-bye.